Welcome to Black Views. Tonight's guest is a very special guy named Joel Hall. He is the founder and artistic director emeritus of the Joel Hall Dancers and Center. He recently collaborated with our own Howard Sandifer for a production of Sweet Freedom Suite, an amazing tribute to four freedom fighters, um, Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hamer, Reverend Martin Luther King, and of course, Nelson Mandela. So today we're gonna to sort of pick his brain about the making of this movement, just the making of this, and also find out the things that he has to do to complete it. Because what we saw was a in, in progress kind of production. And he's gonna you know, get back to it. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. So meanwhile, hey Joe, let's do it. All right, all right. Uh, I am Joel Hall. Artistic Director Emeritus with the Joel Hall Dancers and Center. Uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, interview because we have had so much success with the current production that we are doing, Sweet Freedom Suites with Howard Sandifer. Uh, it is a pleasure to collaborate with another Black composer on doing new work. Uh, it's interesting that we, this work has been called at this time, uh, this work is needed at this time, because as we're finding more and more about our edumacation, which is, a, <laughs> which is another way of saying edu education, the education that we have learned and the education that we are learning are two different things. Therefore, I just wanted to share with you that even the, the uh, objective of two Black men uh, collaborating uh, who are artists in any field right now is, I think, very, very important work because uh, we, that is not our training. That is not who we're supposed to be. We are supposed to be not caring and not liking one another. That is by systematic choice. So, and it wasn't our choice. So we have to pay attention to that and we have to pay attention to where we're going. And most of all, we have to pay attention to where we are right now and what we need to do to understand where we've been. So I think that this collaboration is very strong and to, you know, to, th this is a work in progress. And we um, have started this magnificent work. I really like the work that we're doing. I think that you will enjoy it also once you see it. It is, as, as I said, a pleasure to work with other artists with like minds in like thinking and not just collaborating in a artistic way, but in a spiritual way, because that is the way of the African people. So uh, the collaboration is very, very exciting. And uh, I've been doing a lot of reading on just things in general, but just to upgrade and update myself on my own education about myself. And, you know, I had a trip to Ghana uh, a couple of years ago now, and it really enlightened me on more about who I am as an artist, what it is I have to do to uh, grow myself. And that's where my edumacation comes in, because that is a growth out of what we know or what we think we know. And what we think we know is only what we've been told. So the way to edumacate myself is to read and to go back historically 
uh, to our people. And that has been a marvelous journey and continues to be. I'm every day I'm growing more and more. Right. Okay. So now you're funny. I like you. I like you. Um, what's the next steps with the sweet freedom sweet? You know, you know, in progress, what do you need to do? What do you hope to do? To me, it was excellent as is, but of course you guys see things that we don't see, but what well, that's the point. That's why we're artists. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I believe that artists lead culture. We are the, we are the notators of our social position in time. So I notate movement through historical purposes and Howard notates music through historical purposes. And then we present what we know because it, it, we're more, I think, I think artists are more so, I consider myself a social scientist uh, who is explo constantly exploring movement from a black perspective. And, you know, oftentimes heavily criticized for it but that is the role of an artist to be criticized. And I take it very well. I like what I do. As a matter of fact, I love what I do. The next phase that we're moving towards is an exploration of an expansion of the work. Sweet Freedom Suites is the as we have it now, is almost like a study. I consider it to be like an etude. So now the next thing is to turn it into a masterpiece. So now we move into the next phase. The next phase are looking at other characters in our historical background and adding them to this message and then expanding that consciousness for ourselves and for our viewers and for the audience. Uh, there's also an educational component involved. Now, the educational component is really already there because both of us have schools. Uh, uh, Howard has a school that he's running. Joel has a school that I was, I was running. Now I'm kind of kicking it to someone else. I'm kicking it on uh, as we need to do as we age. And I think it's very important that uh, we learn how to do that and know when to do it. So I'm at a phase where I know now that it should happen. Because as I, the more I live, the more I learn that we're only in the moment. So everything else is a preparation, you see, for the next level of movement, of music, and of a higher level, level of consciousness beyond where we're, where we're thinking. Right. So going back to the, the Harriet Tubman movement, can you sort of describe your thinking? Like, how did you decide the dancers would move this way or move that way? What was your thought process for like that one in particular, the uh, Harriet Tubman? Okay, well, all I would say that every single uh, every single freedom fighter that we have uh, put in this piece has been inspired by what I'm hearing and what I know. So I'm hearing the music that has been set for this collaboration. And I am collaborating movement with what I hear. And what I hear is what I wanna see. So that when I'm looking at music or I'm looking at dancers move to music, 
I am looking at the music that I'm listening to. So anything out of character of that to me seems to be almost contrapuntal. So we don't want to have that happening. I mean, it, un, unless it's intentional. So uh, I was very taken uh, with Howard's music. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of room for more growth. I think that both of us as collaborators are growing through this process of going more and further into each of the characters that we're presenting, the freedom fighters. I'm mentioning them as characters only theatrically and because they were characters, real characters to get through what we're going through. Uh, and I identify very strongly with all of those characters because they are all of us. I know that all of us have a part of each of those characters within our genetic makeup. So therefore, it is a pleasure to be able to 
expound upon, you know, my ancestors and my, these people that just set all this up and kept me going and kept me choreographing and kept me thinking and kept me moving and kept me jerking and current on, you know, through this. And I absolutely love the process. The process is, is brilliant. It's brilliant. Beautiful. One more question about, about this, and then I'm going to move on to some things about you. OK. Um, you said in the Chicago Crusader that this whole thing was the essence of Joel Hall and the essence of Howard Sandifer. What did you mean by that? Like the, this whole production was the essence of you guys. Well, it is the essence of our spirit. And I think a lot of times uh, lately, people are moving away from spirituality into segmented, organized fabrics of what we think is spiritual, rather than what we know and what we've learned, what we've, how we've learned spirituality is through other areas of, I won't be very specific here because I don't want to be offensive, but we have learned to think through other people. And everything that we read, everything that we see, everything that we think we know is not necessarily true. So the essence of our work is true because it's from a spiritual aspect of working, to, of collaborating together as artists. And this brother is, I mean, Howard is off the chain with this music. I mean, I really, really adore everything that we've done. And I know that at the very end point, there will be what we will call a master work or a master piece. And that is done by masters. We are masters. When did you fall in love with dance? When did you know that you were going to be a dancer? I didn't know it. I mean, I started dancing in the street in the neighborhood back in the 1950s when the kids would go out to the corner and dance on the corner under the street light. Okay. Um, you know what I'm saying? That that's what we used to do when I was a child. I'm quite old, so so I'm getting to be an el well, I am an elder now, but I remember, you know, in growing up how much I loved that closeness and that that camaraderie and that brotherhood and sisterhood between the kids they automatically have it we have to learn it as we get older because everything it teaches us not to be not to be brothers and sisters not to really like each other we're brothers and sisters under certain circumstances but that is only under other people's direction mm. rather than through our own purpose and to be purposeful is to be a brother or to be a sister or to be a mother or to be a father or to be a sister or as i said a sister a brother so I learned at a very early age to move because that is in my culture. I grew up in the jazz idiom because that is in my culture. So I didn't, you know, I began to learn other forms of movement also because in order to be a master, you have to know more than you know. More than you know, I like that. Yes. And more than you think you know. And when we get into other aspects of study, we learn that there are other forms of music, there are other forms of dance, there are other forms of uh, reading uh, that take place as you're growing. And you 
pretty much have to know in today's world, I think, well, in the world, world that I grew up in, you have to know a lot in order to become masterful at what you're doing. You have to know more than you know or more than you think you know and be willing to step out there and take that risk. When the first time I walked into a ballet class, it was like, these people looked at me like, what is this fool doing up in here? Mm -hmm. up, in, up in this school, why did you, what you doing up in here? And, you know, I just went in. I didn't care what they had to say. It didn't really matter. What matters was that I wanted to know. And I found out through wanting to know, in spite of the fact that I was not supposed to. And if you look at today's world of classical ballet, you even see how we know more better. Mm. If you know what I'm saying. Okay. I know what you're saying. Okay, and we have beautiful ball ballerinas, black ballerinas, black dancers, uh, people of color who are just magnificent. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, and we pay so much attention to everything else that we cannot focus on who it is, who it is we are for ourselves. Who am I? And what do I have to say? What is my voice? Okay. I can't speak to you through everyone else's, but I can speak to you through mine, but I can only speak to, to you through mine, through education. Got it, got it. Yeah. So again, when did you decide that you wanted to become a dancer, that this was going to be your life passion? It's going to be- it has, it has always been that way. Oh, really? From oh, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't dance formally until I was 17. I didn't take my first ballet class until I was 17, okay. which is quite old for a ballet dancer, but that was not my intention. Okay. My intention was not to be a baller, a ballet dancer. My attention, my intentions was to know more, to be a better dancer. Then I discovered contemporary dance, or what was called modern dance back in the day. So then I began to explore modern as well. Mm -hmm. And how all of these things, how do all of these things tie together into what it, who it is I am? and what statement it is I have to say in any work, particularly in Sweet Freedom Suites because there is a range there of different aspects of who we are through movement. And in that movement, we explore African, we explore uh, modern, we explore ballet, we explore jazz, we explore music. And that is, it's wonderful to be able to jump into that. Everyone that comes to see the work is going to see something different. Yeah, yeah. No person, no one, per when you come to see a work, every person in that audience will come out with a very different perspective according to who they are so they can only come to the work from their perspective and my intention is to make sure that when you look up on that stage that you see something that you identify with something that is you and something that is more universally connected than we as people can be so my career has been influenced by many, many great teachers. Great, I had profound thinkers, very forward thinking people. Tally Beatty, who was a Chicago choreographer who eventually worked with alien opera companies all over the world, was one of my mentors. 
And I remember that we were setting a work in, 19, I believe it was 1984. I was working on one piece and he was in another studio working on another piece. Mm -hmm. And he, we would come together afterwards and have these conversations. And he, he would tell me, we would talk about fear and fear of being open and fear of being loud and fear of saying anything because we were mostly supposed to be muted. We're a muted culture. So, you know, I'm, we're, we're, we're muted to the, to a certain perspective, but then when you look universal, universally, we're not because we're all over the world. I was in uh, the former Soviet Union with my company performing. And I remember going to this uh, department store called Gooms, which is a big one block department store, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. with several stories. They had a whole floor devoted to jazz music. A complete block floor. Every jazz artist that was possibly imaginable, they knew more than we knew. So that to me taught me how the, of the influence in England, in Liverpool, in Northampton, in Glasgow, Scotland, in uh, Norway, in Bergen, Norway, those people know who we are. Right. right. We, a lot of times, don't know who we are. Right. And, and when you explore those areas, you find out that these people know more about us than we know. Okay. Through what it is we know. Yeah. How do they learn it? They learn it from us. They learn it from Black music and from Black dance. Yeah. And black art. Yes. Yeah. And black people. Okay. Because okay. So, that's where everything comes from. Yeah. So now my next question, I pretty much know the answer to. You were a dancer, but you majored in sociology. So mm -hmm. I see that that's part of what you're about. You know what I mean? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. It, uh, as I said earlier, I, I believe that I am a social scientist and I'm making commentary on the culture in which I am involved and the culture in which is my past through movement, through dance. That is the vehicle by which I am a sociologist or associate or a social scientist. Exactly. I see it. I feel it. It's there. Yes. Yes, it's true. It's true. <laughs> what What is the uh, the mission of the Joel Hall dancer? You know, the whole company. What's the mission of the company? The mission of the company is to awaken the dancer in everyone's soul. Yeah. Very simple. And when I say everyone, I'm being very inclusive rather than exclusive. I think that our mission has to be to enlighten and educate others through what it is we present and what it is we do. And I think that has been the success of Sweet Freedom Suites is that it is enlightening it's refreshing, it's joyful, and it's lovely. And you know, I, I love being happy as much as I can be, in spite of the things that are going on in the world. I have to find an inner peace and a stillness within myself to be confident enough to deal with all of that. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. yeah. So that is my mission, to awaken the dancer in everyone's soul. Also to educate as many people as I possibly can, while I can, 
on what that means. And using any method, any idiom, any vernacular that I possibly can, and even creating a new lexicon if I have to, in order to do the work. The most important part of the artistry is the work. Far above anything. So that's what I look at immediately is what is this outcome of this work that we're doing? How is it going to move someone? How is it going to put something on somebody's mind that they weren't thinking about? Mm -hmm. And these figures certainly are heroes and sheroes, certainly move us to that level. And I hate to, to do this, but we're running out of time. But I want mm -hmm. you to tell me a little about the programs at your dance company. I know there's a Halloween class coming we're up. We're having we're having a thriller class yeah. for Michael. Okay. Yeah. And people are invited. They can go to the website to find out information on website. Just tell them the website. The, the, our website is uh, www dot joelhall dot org o r g as opposed to dot com so that's j o e l h a l l at dot uh, uh, org joelhall dot org and that'll give you a lot of the information about who we are and what it is we do and why we do it right. Right. Now, where are you located now? Because I know you were in Edgewater, but you moved someplace else. What, okay. Where, where we, for a long time, we were at 5961 6, North Clark Street. I've had so many locations over the years. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, we have to move like gypsies. I know. Okay. But we are now located at 2951 West Montrose at Sacramento in Al Albany Park. Okay, got it. And it is, a, we are still floating at the moment because I'm only teaching online as we do not have a permanent home space yet, but we were donated a building by a major foundation. And uh, it is our job now to build it out. So we're in the process of raising funds to build out our space. So the space is really focused at innovation of the next wave and how we are going to be able to communicate with these young people about who they are and who it is they are becoming. So we're looking very for, forward, forward, forward to opening that space. It's very important that it opens. Yes, yeah, we need Because it. my faculty is outstanding. Okay. We do not play. It's not a playground. It's a playground when you're experimenting. Sure. It's a playground kind of when you're learning but it is not a playground when you're becoming an artist. You are focused at how that's being done, how that's going to happen. And mostly it's by who you are. I believe there's artistry in everyone. So we all have gifts. The point is to explore what that gift is and to exploit it to its highest numerator so wonderful clance it's been a pleasure 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 uh conversing with you about sweet freedom sweets <laughs> <laughs>